There's another 2018 free response question. It appeared on the Calc A, B, and B, C exams in 2018. And it's a calculator question, and it's talking about a particle that moves along the x-axis, and we're given a velocity function for that particle. Uh, that velocity function holds on the interval 0 to 3.5. And then they provide us with the position of the particle, negative 5 on the x-axis, at time 0. Part A says find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 3. So hopefully you recognize, hey, I need the acceleration at 3. I'm going to have to have the derivative of velocity, right? The rate of change of velocity is acceleration. Um, and then I'm going to have to evaluate that derivative at 3. Now, the, the way that this problem was intended for it to be done on the exam, especially since it's uh, a timed exam, is not for you to take the derivative of this by hand and develop an acceleration function first and then evaluate the acceleration function at three, but to use your calculator's capability of finding the numerical value of a derivative for you. So what I did is I used my TI-83's capability to take the derivative of this and evaluate it at three. And the result that you should end up with after doing the same thing on your calculator is negative 2.118. In part B, it asks us to find the position of the particle at time 3. So we know the position of the particle at time 0 is negative 5, right? So I'm just labeling that as x of 0. And we're going to have to add on how much the position of the particle changes by from 0 to 3 by integrating the rate of change of position. And the rate of change of position is velocity. So if we do this calculation, toss a negative 5 in place of the x of 0 that I have represented on that top line. Uh, it all can happen on the calculator, just like we did in part A. You're not going to have success in trying to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find an antiderivative of this and then toss in the limits of integration and take a difference. Uh, that's not going to happen. So uh, again, use the technology to your advantage in this type of situation. Once you get the expression on your page that you need to evaluate, use your calculator to evaluate it. And the object's position at time 3 is approximately negative 1.7 0.76 on the x-axis. Part C has two different things that we're asked to do. Well, two different things that we're asked to evaluate, and then we're asked to interpret what each one represents. So this first one here, uh, it's something that you can, again, do straight on the calculator, right? Do the integral from 0 to 3.5 of this velocity function. You see my input to the calculator right here. Rounding that to three digits of accuracy beyond the decimal gives me 2.844. So what does this represent? Well, this represents not the object's position at time 3.5. It represents the change in the object's position across the limits of integration, right? When you integrate a rate of change, and velocity is the rate of change of position, your end result is how much change occurs between the limits of integration. And in this case, it's the change in position. Uh, the difference between the calculation that we just talked about and the one that we're about to get to next is obviously the inclusion of those absolute values. Uh, I would call this the integral of speed from 0 to 3.5. So speed is the absolute value of velocity. And when we're changing any negative velocities to positive velocities with those absolute values, we're never going to be subtracting any distances off that were maybe covered in the negative direction. We're just going to keep accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. So you definitely see a discrepancy between the two calculations, right? They're off by about a unit from each other. So I did this integral on the calculator once again, uh, and I had to interpret what it means. I think we already mentioned it. It's going to represent the total distance that the object travels on the interval from 0 to 3.5. Last part of this talks about a second particle. It's also moving along the x-axis. They do not give us a velocity function for this particle. They give us a position function. So the position of the second particle is given by x sub 2 of t, also holds on the interval from 0 to 3.5. When are the two particles moving with the same velocity? So we have to recognize that to determine, to determine a velocity function for this second particle, we need to take the derivative of that. So it's a pretty quick derivative. Hopefully I didn't goof it at all here. Derivative of t squared is 2t. Derivative of minus t is going to be negative 1 or minus 1. And I want to know when the particles have the same velocity. So I set the two velocities equal to each other. Uh, the calculator is in play, so I don't have to worry about trying to solve this by hand or anything like that. I graphed my velocity function that we've been dealing with throughout the three portions of this. 
so far. I graphed the new velocity function that we just determined. I found the one time on the interval from 0 to 3.5 where the two velocities were exactly the same, and that time is 1.571.